This is an introduction to event history analysis. We will first discuss the advantage of using longitudinal versus cross-sectional analysis. Cross-sectional data analysis gives us great details about the current situation of a population at a given moment. In particular, it is possible to relate individual characteristics to each other. On the other hand, it is a poor tool for causal analysis. In fact, cross-sectional analysis hardly integrates the dimension of time. Now, dimension of time is essential to establish cause and effect relationship between two phenomena. Longitudinal data are much harder to collect. It costs a lot more, it takes a lot more time, and longitudinal analysis requires a lot of investment in training. But longitudinal data analysis integrates the dimension of time, which is an essential dimension for causal analysis. So now, who can use event history analysis? So first of all, we must know that event history analysis has its origin first in biology and epidemiology. This is why these techniques are often called survival analysis. The first events that were studied with these techniques were the deaths of patients. Event history analysis also originates in engineering. Indeed, we also talk about analyzing failure time. But all the social sciences can use time in their quantitative analyses, whether in demography, obviously, but also in economics, sociology, psychology, geography, and history. To practice event history analysis, there is no special prerequisite. Everyone can do it. Of course, knowledge in statistics is an advantage, but above all, a logical mind is necessary. The conceptualization of time and event is essential in event history analysis. The concept of event history analysis are difficult to acquire. It takes a lot of practice to master event history analysis. Cross-sectional is a bit like cycling. Once you've learned, you do not forget. On the other hand, Event history analysis is a bit like learning to fly like a bird. One can learn to hang gliding or parachuting. It takes a lot of practice and we forget easily. Now, to illustrate the important difference between cross-sectional analysis and longitudinal analysis, we will consider a very simple example. The determinants of residential independence being tenant or owner rather than housed. In particular, we would like to know if the marital status explains the residential status. We will analyze here only non-migrant men who were residents and housed at the age of 15 years. The data come from a retrospective biographical survey conducted in Antananarivo in 98. The results of cross-sectional analysis. In this first analysis, the residential independence of men is considered at the time of the survey, here in 98, using a logistic model. The dependent variable, loc proprio, shows that 360 out of 623 men were renters or owners at the time of the survey. The reference category in the regression is the 1963 to 72 generation, uneducated, single, and childless. Based on these results, and without going into details, the one who would only get cross-sectional data would conclude that the older generation is more likely to leave housed status, that the instruction has no effect on this chance, and that it is the, f the fact of being or having been in union that mainly explains the current residential status of a tenant or owner. We conducted a second analysis on the same sample, but this time considering the whole life of individuals since the age of 15 years. The Cox model used here will consider residential status as an event, 
and not as a status at the time of the survey. This event will be the exits of the house status after the age of 15 years. This event is renewable because the individual can return to the population at risk if he becomes housed again. The dependent variables are the same as in the logit model, as are the reference categories. The results of the Cox model lead to conclusions different from those of the logit model. If the instruction still has no effect, the generation has no effect. But most of all, only the informal union, as opposed to celibacy, explains the exit of the housed status, but ten times less strongly. Indeed, the multiplicative factor is 1.5 in the Cox model against 14.6 in the Logit model. There are no more significant differences between single and married informal union, or between single and separated or divorced. So, the reduction in the effects of the explanatory variables is not related to lower numbers. On the contrary, it is the same sample of 623 men who experience 415 exits from housed status. In addition, this sample is multiplied by the number of years lived a total of 9,300 person years. The difference in outcome for marital status in both models is due to the fact that the current marital status does not say anything about the anteriority of marital status in relation to residency status. In other words, the change in marital status may have occurred after the residential change which the logit model cannot capture using cross-sectional data. Thus, analyzing the determinants of event is very different from analyzing the statuses resulting from these events. The independent variables, even if they appear with the same modalities in the two uh, models, are of different nature. Generation is a fixed variable that is defined at birth, while the others are time-dependent variables in the Cox model. The level of education could have changed between the beginning of observation at age 15 and residential change. The same holds for marital status. Although the generation is a fixed variable, its effect is not the same in both models, because the generation acts throughout the life of the individual since the age of 15 for the Cox model, but only at the survey date for the logit model. The causal diagrams are therefore different in the two models. For the cross-sectional model, the dependent variable is a status at a fixed time and the vertical arrows indicate that the relationships with the independent variables do not take time into account. On the contrary, for the longitudinal model, the dependent variable is a change of status and the horizontal arrows indicate that the relationships take time into account. Some independent variables also vary with time, which is indicated by TVC, which means time varying covariate.